Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. We have a great program today. I have a special guest joining me again. He was here on the last Tipping Point Show. We are talking about a totally fascinating subject. You've got to buckle your seatbelts wherever you are. Josh Peck works in full-time ministry with Skywatch TV as a documentary filmmaker. He's also the author of numerous best-selling books, and Josh is the founder of Daily Renegade, where he has hosted a variety of shows in podcast. And he's been featured on numerous television and radio shows. And we're talking again on this program today about Abaddon Ascending, Josh's book that he wrote along with Thomas Horn. And the subtitle here is The Ancient Conspiracy at the Center of CERN's Most Secretive Mission, Technology and Bible Collide. Now, on the last program, we went through the basics of you know, quantum physics and all those kinds of things. Josh, thank you for joining me, by the way. Great to yeah, have you absolutely. here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, glad to be here. So if you didn't watch the last show, uh, we're going to dive right into the big middle of the of the CERN and all, all this about. But we did a show just talking about the basics of science, the basics of the quantum physics, those kind of things. You gave such a great explanation to those things and why it's important to believers to understand those things. And you can understand those things. You, you don't have to get confused by all the scientific talk. And it's important not to be intimidated by the scientific community when they try to convince us that uh, we don't know what we're talking about and the Bible's a lie. So we're going to talk about CERN. And so for those who may not be familiar, talk about the Large Hadron Collider and how that's different from CERN. Sure. So the basics of it, the Large Hadron Collider is the actual machine that smashes particles together. Uh, CERN is just the, the organized body of people that decide what happens. So, so that's the organization. Um, so it, it's, it's really easy. LHC is the machine. CERN are the people in charge of doing these experiments. And they use the machine. They smash particles together to try to uh, see if there's new particles out there in the universe. And they have made some, some pretty interesting discoveries, most notably the Higgs boson discovery in uh, 2012. That was, that was really big news. That was done uh, at, with the LHC at CERN. So just in a nutshell, that's, that's what uh, CERN and the LHC are. So CERN is an international project, right? Yeah, yeah, worldwide. I, I think it's something like 100 or 200 countries are involved in, in, in it. So it, it is a big worldwide effort. So the, talk about the land that CERN sits on and the significance of the land. Oh, yeah. So this, this was really weird. Uh, when we were doing research for Abaddon Ascending, we came across this interesting piece of history that when originally when they were building CERN, they had to stop construction because when they were digging in the ground, they found all these ruins, Roman ruins. It turns out where CERN is built, it used to be uh, an ancient Roman city called Apollyacum, where they actually believed that that was where the bottomless pit was. <laughs> oh so, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, what are the chances of that? So that then, of course, that has tie into Revelation 9 and uh, locusts and all, all, all this weird stuff that we could, we could probably talk about. But they actually had to halt construction for a while to excavate this city. Um, and then so that so where CERN is right now was built over that city. And, and it's a weird place, too, because it's on the border of Switzerland and France. Like, it's, a, it's an odd choice of location. It's like, why not say, hey, there's a city here. Let's just go down the street and build it over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why, let's not have it on the border of two countries, you know. Uh, so really weird. It seems intentional. Uh, and then that bottomless pit connection really makes you, makes you wonder. <laughs> Well, we're, we're going to get to the bottomless pit here in just a little bit. It's, it is a fascinating, I'm telling because I've, I have known about this for many years. I, I have not understood it as fully, certainly, as you're going to explain it on this show. Uh, but it's troubling. I mean, it's troubling to a very, very large degree when you understand the implications of what they're doing there and even where it is. I mean, where they think there's a bottomless pit. So talk about quantum field theory and what does it have to do with CERN? Yeah, so quantum field theory to date is the most accurate science that we have available to us. Um, it, it makes the uh, mo most accurate predictions of any other science. So the, the actual science itself, quantum field theory, uh, is real. It, it's a real science. It's a real thing. But like everything, and, and kind of going along with what we talked about in the last show, uh, some scientists will take it too far, and they'll say that it disproves the afterlife and stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. None of, the, none of that 
interpretive stuff is true, just the actual science. So that's a really important discovery. But, but of course, because this happens in pop culture and scientists do this kind of stuff all the time to be sensational, they gave it a name, the God particle, for really no good reason. They, they called it that. And they, they started saying the particle is what gives us mass, which isn't exactly right. Uh, and, uh, and, and so that, that story kind of blew up and went all over the place. And a lot of people had a lot of uh, misconceptions about what, what was actually discovered. Because again, scientists are going to have their own interpretations on everything. I mean, I'm sure there were probably scientists saying that, yo, this somehow disproves God too. Like every yeah. scientific discovery, scientific discovery does somehow. But, um, but, but the reality is it just shows us as Christians, wow, this is how God actually created stuff and it's genius. Um, it, it's a really genius way to go about it instead of having little bits of matter. Uh, so that's how the LHC works. That's, that's a basic, just what quantum field theory is. It just says that particles aren't little pieces of matter like we would think about. They're just spikes in a field that's around us all the time. So uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's extremely interesting. Now, we, we've done the prior program and we've been talking up until now. Now, this is where it gets very, very interesting. Now, this book is called Abaddon Ascending. Okay, And that's for a reason. And my next question is, is CERN trying to open a portal? Now, you said earlier the ground that they are building on is they believe that's where the bottomless pit is. Okay, And yeah. so are they trying to open some type of a portal, do you believe? I think that within CERN, probably 99% of the scientists that work there just want to learn about the universe, and that, that's about the extent of it. But there does seem to be certain people, perhaps in the leadership, uh, but there does seem to be certain people who are interested in using this to open some kind of portal. In fact, their science director, uh, Sergio Bertolucci, just came out and said it a few years ago, said that there's possible unknown unknowns out there, and they have plans, future plans, uh, with a, a possibly uh, the LHC at CERN, but maybe another collider that they want to build later, but they have plans where they want to uh, probe and map out extra dimensions. So when a scientist says extra dimensions, when you really drill down into what they're saying and the concepts they're putting out, it's basically what we would think of as like the spirit world or spiritual reality, uh, heaven, right. hell, that kind of stuff. Um, it, we're basically talking about the same thing, just with different terms. So with them wanting to basically, yeah, stabilize some type of portal and uh, either communicate with or, or send a machine in, or I, I don't know how they would go about it, but they want to make some kind of contact with whatever's out there and, uh, and try to map out that area of extra dimensional reality if they can. So that is disturbing because even though the scientists are doing that, e even if they just have a purely secular uh, worldview and they're just thinking it's it's just extra dimensions of reality. They don't know what they're messing with, and That's right. unfortunately, yeah, hubris in the scientific community is a big problem. So they tend not to worry about things like that, you know, because the Bible that's just silly fairy tale myth stuff. That's kind of a lot of their attitude around it. So uh, really, what they're doing though, whether they know it or not, if they're going to try to do this, that that could be. I mean, that's essentially praying to false gods. I mean, that's communicating with evil beings because good angels aren't going to communicate back except to say, you know, repent and accept Jesus as Savior or something. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> well, they're, they're dealing with the devil. So yeah. talk about the, there's a communication system that you talk about using gravity that mm -hmm. they're toying with or they could be using. Talk about that. So the, the graviton, what they've discovered, just in the mathematics uh, uh, describing how a graviton would work, is that it's got this strange ability to be able to escape our three dimensions of reality and, and go into other higher dimensions of, of reality if they exist. So four dimension, five dimension. Uh, and that's possibly why gravity is so much weaker. Well, the idea of this communication device is to take gravitons one after another in a string and affect the spin so you have one that spins up, one that spins down, and create like a, a like a binary code, like a like Morse code almost. I don't know who they're right. alerting, you know, their, their their presence to. And and to me, it seems like that would be an invitation. Whereas if we left them alone, maybe they wouldn't be able to come through. And and I I, I put forth the idea in the book: could this possibly be what causes Revelation nine? Like. Is it something like the Tower of Babel incident where uh, God says, you know what, you want these false gods? Fine, you got them. We're going to put them, you know, 
scatter you across the world. I'll take Israel. You, you got the corrupt gods, uh, you know, false gods, little G gods, uh, which is why we have all these religions. Is it, is it a repeat of that where you have ignorant people not knowing what they're messing with, communicating or tr attempting to communicate with false gods? And, you know, this would be during the tribulation, but God says, all right, fine. You, you want them? You got them. And then Apollyon, Abaddon, you get, you get the locusts. You, they all come through. Could that be... Uh, the spark that ignites the whole Revelation 9 scenario. And I, and I, I put in the book, possibly, that, that it could be something like that. So it's interesting that we live in a time where something like that is actually possible today. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you said there are Christians that CERN, you know, were working there, but the majority are not. Yeah. And, uh, and you talk about, you know, the uh, arrogance, the, the pride of a lot of the scientists thinking that they can tap into that next dimension not understanding that there is another dimension. We all know that, you yep. know, Jesus after his resurrection appeared to the disciples, then disappeared, you know, and so there certainly is another dimension that we, we can't see at this point. But talk about now the, the Higgs field doomsday. What is that? Yeah, so this is another scenario, and this was actually put forth by, uh, uh, as far as I know, secular physicists. But it's the idea that our universe, uh, the space outside of the earth isn't a true vacuum meaning so the, the the higgs field which is everywhere the way that it's described is it's on this razor's edge of energy and and we as christians would call this fine tuning um it just means if the energy was a little higher nothing can survive if it was a little lower nothing could survive and, and you find you find this actually repeated in a lot of areas of of science um the way that cells come together, the way that the, the energy levels and uh, subatomic particles and things like that. It, it, it's fine tuning. It really just shows that there's a creator. But um, physicists who don't believe that, they, they look at this and they think, well, what if something tipped that scale? What if the Higgs field, what if something did actually give it a little too much energy? What, what would that look like? Because there's fears that CERN uh, or the LHC at CERN could cause this type of domino effect. So the idea would be that in a in a localized part of the universe somewhere, you know, whether out in the reaches of space or maybe caused at CERN be, be, because of an experiment or something, that the energy level would increase just enough where it has this cascading effect. Now, what that would right. mean is the uh, the Higgs field would would ramp up to maximum energy. Uh, which, and like we talked about before, the Higgs field is what determines mass. So if you have a higher Higgs field, you have a uh, higher mass, you have a higher interaction for mass, which means stars become more massive as this bubble of uh, uh, energized Higgs field expands. Um, stars would become more massive, turn in the black holes. It would actually get to the point that uh, even quarks, even the smallest particles that we know of would become so dense and heavy they would turn into miniature black holes. Bodies and all the evildoers have been judged and, and are in the lake of fire and there's a new heaven and new earth because the old had passed away. Could this Higgs field doomsday, could this be the type of mechanism that God uses to recreate everything right. into what it was always meant to be? We would have bodies that would be able to sustain that because they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be able right. to degrade the way ours do now. So th that's interesting to think about. And they wouldn't be of that dimension. You know, right. They'll be of, of a higher dimension. So what, what concerns you most, Josh? Because it's been a few years since you guys wrote this book. A lot of developments have happened. What, what concerns you most that's happening in the world today? Yeah, ma mainly, well, in terms of CERN, it's the ongoing problem of, of hubris and scientists. So the way that right now the LHC is operating at power levels that are actually less than cosmic rays entering our atmosphere so if if the LHC was going to cause a black hole or something we should have already seen that in the atmosphere over earth yeah. you know a million times over and it, and it doesn't happen so right now that doesn't that doesn't worry me as much but the 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 way that scientists will talk about how safe the LHC is it's like there's no there's no humility there. They'll just say, it is ridiculous to think that this is dangerous at all. It's perfectly safe. Nothing can go wrong. You know, I mean, it's basically like how they used to talk about the Titanic. So it's yeah. just setting, setting it up for failure somehow. So that pride, that, that hubris, that's what concerns me the most because it makes me think they think that this is totally safe. They could mess up somewhere and actually cause something that may not destroy the earth completely because we know there's still prophecy that needs to be fulfilled, but, but could cause, uh, ir irreparable damage possibly. Um, and 
if if they can't foresee that because of their own pride, then that that's a huge concern. So just that ongoing problem. I'm glad that there are at least a couple of Christians uh, at CERN maybe that don't have as, as bad of a pride problem. But but by and large, I I think just kind of the reckless way that that the LHC could be used either now or in the future uh, that that does that does concern me. So they have some type of a statue in front of CERN that has some kind of a spiritual significance. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Shiva the Destroyer, actually. And, and it's, um, it's a, it comes from, the, I believe, the Bhagavata Purana or, or one, one of the, the Hindu texts, I believe. But basically, it's a cosmic entity, you know, in, in that religion of God that destroys reality and recreates it. Uh, which, which is what a weird gift. This was given as a gift to, to CERN. <laughs> yeah. What no, a weird you. gift. And when you look at this thing, you see this, this cosmic entity. It looks like she's coming out of a portal. I mean, there's, there's like the circle thing and every, every element of it has, has meaning. And I talk about all that in the book, but just, just the imagery around it. It's, and the story about undoing reality and recreating it. It's like, Man, what are the true purposes over there at CERN? Because that's a, a you know, again, that's that's a weird gift to give. <laughs> yeah, and if if you're pure scientist, why why do you need that imagery? And it, and it was a gift, but yep. you know, they're I'm going to destroy and put everything back together. Well, it's been a fascinating conversation with you for the last two weeks, and yeah. for people who are watching this, you know, and you're a Christian out there, and you say, how does this matter? Well, it's going on at a very important time in human history. And what they're doing there has, it's, it's a tremendously powerful thing. Isn't that right, Josh? I mean, it's, this yeah. is a very powerful thing. Absolutely. So it just has a lot of ability to go wrong. And, you know, we hope that it doesn't. But there will be a time, according to Revelation 9, that Abaddon will ascend. There, there will be an opening. And there will be tremendous devastation that happens on the earth as a result. I encourage you to get Josh's book with my friend Tom Horn here, Abaddon. Ascending the Ancient Conspiracy at the Center of the most secret, uh, of the World's Most Secretive Mission. And so, Josh, where can they get a hold of you? What's your website where they can get a hold of you? Sure. Uh, if they want to get the book, the best place is skywatchtvstore.com. There's probably a couple of packages that it's available in because Tom Horn likes to do that a lot, which is great. Yeah. So you'll probably get some extra stuff. Uh, and then for me personally, my website is dailyrenegade.com, and we'd love people to go check it out and be part of the family. Check out Josh's website there and get the book. God bless you, Josh. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. Good, good to be here. And for everybody watching on YouTube right now, we want you to become a subscriber to endtimes.com. Now, we have the rest of the podcast that's coming up. Plus, we have articles and videos all week long here on endtimes.com for myself, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Greg Laurie, and other contributors. $7 a month, $77 a year. We want you to become a subscriber right here to endtimes.com. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned now because there's a lot more show coming up. You have to go to endtimes.com though to